How's it going YouTube? It's Apoc. Today I'm going to show you how to make this effect in Lens Studio. So it's a character, an object with facial features like the mouth in this case, on top of a background. The background part seems to mess up a lot of people, so I'm going to show you how to do that in two different ways. This is one method here. There's a better method though. So let's get right into it. We'll make a new project real fast. All right, what's up guys? So first thing to do is click on your camera here, face effects, or you can scroll down, just search for head binding. I'm gonna add that in. We're gonna delete the face occluder. That just like makes it so the head uh, is cut out from the 3D object, but you're probably not gonna want that. And the next thing we're gonna add is our 3D model. So I'm just gonna represent that with a sphere, I guess, or a box. You can see it rotate more, I guess. Put that under your head binding. You can also move this above the effects. You really don't need that effects at all. And see the box is really far forwards. So to fix that, we're gonna change the attachment point to first face center. And then we're going to zero out all of these. You just hit tab and you'll switch between them. You can type zero and press enter. Now the box is attached to my face. We need to just come in here and move it back a little. It's being a little annoying with me right now, but yeah, just move that back a little bit and scale it up. I'm just gonna move mine up a little bit as well. Just position it however you want. And there you go, it's pretty much on my head. Um, let's move that back again and scale it up a tiny bit more. All right, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, doesn't need to be perfectly positioned as you're not even gonna see the background to know that it's not perfectly positioned. All right, next thing to do is Click on add new, face effects, face inset. Now drag the face inset up to your head binding and then just delete the stuff it added. As you can see the face inset is already on there. So all you need to do is click on that and then you can move it around and position it and resize it however you want. Now we're gonna right click on this and duplicate it. Over here on the right, you can see we have face region. We can select nose, we can select left eye, right eye and your entire face. So we're gonna go with left eye here and we're just gonna move this up like that and I'm gonna duplicate it once more. Move that over and choose right eye. So you may have noticed that these kind of snap together. If you don't want that, simply click on the magnet up here and they won't snap anymore. I like to use the snapping so it all lines up nice, but there you go. That's how we do the face and sets on the 3D object. Now. The fast way to add in the background is to come into your camera. So you click on your camera and over here in your inspector, you choose clear color. Make sure that's checked and you'll see an input option. I'm going to drag in a texture here to use. Now drag your texture over to your input and now you have a background. So you're pretty much done if that's all you want to do. However, if you want to do something else, you can just clear that and, uh, We'll use that in a second. Come over here to your regular objects list and click off everything. Choose add new and look for screen image. Forgetting where it is. There it is. All right. Now on your orthographic camera, you're going to click on the camera, come into your inspector and look for render target. Click on that, add new render target. Make sure that changes to render target two or whatever you name it. And now, on your screen image here, you add in your texture. You can also click here and add the texture from the list. Now what you want to do is change your texture stretch mode, but first click on your original camera, choose the input, and now choose render target two as your input. And you'll see that what this camera is showing is now the background of your 3D object basically. So that's how you control the background image more because if you're just using the input, as the texture, then you can't really control what it looks like. But with this, you can control all the fill modes. So you want it to stretch, or if you want it to fill and cut, which is probably what you want to do. Now it looks way better. So that's how you do it, guys. It's pretty simple if you need any help um, or Lens Studio updates and this doesn't work anymore, make sure you leave a comment below so I can either update the tutorial or respond to your comments and try and help you out. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next Lens tutorial, I guess. I don't know what will be next, but yeah, thanks for watching.